The first rule in understanding protecting your data is that data is king. When I first started getting into computers, I my very first computer was a 386. This was before Pentiums came out. And the computer was over $2,000. I think it was like $2,500 for the computer, a keyboard, and a monitor. Computers back in the day were very expensive. We're talking three, four, five thousand dollars for a computer. RAM was expensive. Hard drives were expensive. And if you don't know what RAM and hard drives are, guess what? We have previous videos that you can go look at completely for free to check those out. As computers, however, became more and more popular, the technology increased and the costs decreased. And so you got more for your money, which is kind of unheard of nowadays, but computers became super cheap compared to what they used to be. And so if you're working on a computer, if you're fixing a computer, there's only so much you can do to a computer before it becomes pointless and you should buy a new computer. So for example, if you have a five-year-old computer and the RAM goes bad and you need to replace the RAM. Well, it's a five-year-old computer. Let's say new RAM is going to cost you 80 bucks, 100 bucks. Labor is going to cost you 100 bucks. Let's say you're going to drop $200, $300 on a new computer or $200, $300 on repair of the computer. How much is the new computer going to cost? Usually people just go buy a new computer. It's more cost effective. So there's a limit in general on how much you're going to spend to repair an old computer. Data, however, is king. Data is priceless. For example, if you're like me, you don't even have a film camera anymore. You're all digital camera. Where are those images being kept? Where's your child's second birthday pictures being kept? Where's the pictures of that dead relative being kept? Where are those things being held? It's being held on your computer. It's being held on your hard drive. You don't want to lose those. So data is king. Data is always priceless. And we're going to take a look at data migration, data backup, as well as the opposite of all this, which is destroying the data. So let's begin looking at data migration. What we're looking at here is moving data from one device to another device. So let's say that you do go and buy that new computer. You don't want to lose the information on the older computer, so you want to migrate it. You want to move it from one spot to another spot. Before you migrate data, however, you want to make sure the data is clean. So you're going to want to run your antivirus checks, your anti-spyware checks, all this stuff. We'll talk about antivirus, spyware, all that stuff later on. So you want to make sure you're moving clean stuff over. You don't want to infect a new computer. There are different methods to migrate data. Windows comes with several built-in methods. For example, user state migration tool, file and setting transfer wizards. There are other ways to do this. There are third-party ways to do this, which becomes actually easier for most consumers. You can also bring it to a store. They will migrate your data for you at a cost. So there are different ways to move your data from one location to another. Also, something that you need to be aware of, and that is deactivate software if it's applicable. For example, on my Apple, I have the Creative Cloud Suite. I have Adobe's Creative Cloud. Adobe only lets me put this on so many computers, and then they go, you've got too many computers who are using this. You're violating terms. We're not going to give you another version to put on a computer. If I get rid of this computer that's in front of me, and I want a new computer, Adobe's going, wait, you've got it now on this many computers. No, 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 no. So I will have to deactivate it on this computer and say, I don't want it on this computer anymore. I'm not using it on this computer anymore. I'm going to use it on a different computer. And deactivation of software differs depending on the software. So be sure to check that out before you just switch over to new computers. Backups. Backup, 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 backup. Hard drives, as we talked about before, are going to die. It's not a question of if they're going to die. It's always a question of when. Hard drives fail. Every hard drive will fail. You just don't know when they're going to fail. And so here is the most likely component in your computer that's going to fail, holding the most priceless stuff on your computer. Kind of a funny way how that works. So you want to back up your data. So when that hard drive does die, 
you don't lose it. If you are backing up your data, you want to back it up to a different device, obviously. You don't want to keep it on the same hard drive. Most people will have, let's say, an external hard drive. That's really not backing up the data. What I mean by that is, God forbid there's a fire at your house, or there's a hurricane, or there's an earthquake, or something bad happens. If your backup is right next to your computer, if there's a fire, it's going to wipe out both your backup and your computer. And so for true backup, you want to consider something called off-site. You want to have it elsewhere. You want to have it not at your physical location. Online backup has become increasingly popular. And best part, it's becoming increasingly less expensive. It's not as expensive as it used to be. In fact, almost anybody, if you have a computer, can afford online backup. Here are a list of some of the more popular data backup sites. You have Backblaze, you have Carbonite, Mosey, and iDrive. I put Dropbox in there. Dropbox is not really a data backup site. What I mean by that is the other four and other data backups will take your information and back it up. It's an entire backup program. Dropbox is offline storage in that you have offline storage. You have files and folders that you can keep on Dropbox. In fact, if something happened to my computer, I would lose very little because all of my pictures, all of my videos, all of my documents are not actually stored on my computer. They're stored on the cloud with the Dropbox. So I'm considering that some level of online data backup. Taking a look now at data disposal. So we talked about moving your data we talked about backing up your data. Now we're doing the opposite. We're talking about destroying your data. So why would you want to destroy data? Well, let's say that you get a new computer. You don't need your old computer anymore. You don't want people to get access to the data that was on your old computer. And so you need to destroy it. You don't want people getting all of your tax records. You don't want weird people getting a hold of your uh, pictures of your children. I mean, this is kind of creepy stuff. So you want to make sure that data is wiped. And it's not enough to reformat a hard drive. Basically, when you reformat a hard drive, let me grab a book here. We'll talk about this book, by the way, when we talk about social engineering. Excellent book. But in any book, right, you have what we call a table of contents. The table of contents tells you what page information's on. When you reformat a hard drive, all you're doing is you're going into a book and you're ripping out the table of contents. But the information is still in the book. The information is still in the book. All you've done is taken off the table of contents, but all that data is still in there, which means that it can be retrieved. So you just can't reformat a hard drive. You have to destroy the information. To destroy the information, you will use something called a degaussing tool. If you recall from our look at hardware, hard drives are magnetic. And so a degaussing tool basically honk the information. I moved the wind guard there with that honk. You degauss it, you wipe it, you hit it with a powerful magnet, and you erase information. There are also special drive wiping software. One that comes to mind is something called D-Band, Derek's Boot and Nuke, where it will go back into that book and it will rewrite over all these pages and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite until it's a garbled mess, which causes it unable to be retrieved. To destroy optical media, so for example, you have some DVDs, you have some CDs, what you're going to need to do there is grab a screwdriver <laughs> and scratch it. Now, quick little trivia for you. When you're destroying a CD, don't do this side. Do it on this side. And this is a driver for a printer I got. You want to scratch away this part because images or the information bounces off the back part of this. So if you wipe this off, the lasers go right through. No data is retrievable. You can also buy special optic media shredders. You put them in, destroys them, and of course, you can also introduce a hammer to a CD or a DVD and bust it up that way. 
You might hear about people putting it in microwaves. I've actually heard that people are able to retrieve data off of that as well. So um, anyhow, let's say that you want complete assurance that your data will be destroyed because even if you run a degaussing tool, even if you run special disk wiping software, there is a chance that people can retrieve information off those drives or partial information off those drives. So let's say you want to be absolutely positively sure that your data cannot be retrieved off a hard drive. Here's what you got to do. One, run DBAN, run disk wiping software on the hard drive, step one. Two, degauss it, wonk with the magnets. Three, physically open the drive. Remember, dust gets in there, can cause problems, so open up the drive. Take your hammer that you just used to destroy your CD and beat the heck out of the hard drive plates. And finally, in case that wasn't enough, take those hard drive plates and put one in this garbage bag and one in this garbage bag and one in this garbage bag and send them out on different days and you can be assured that your data has been destroyed and shall never be taken away, shall never be recovered. Okay, our next video, we're gonna take a look at network security.